Silver Station receives an emergency call from the Coast Guard. A worried family member has dialed 999 after two kayakers failed to return from a trip out to sea. It's been nearly four hours since they set off. Yeah, good. Is it really clear to go out there and investigate? We didn't actually know what time or at what point they got into difficulty. Were we looking for people treading water, trying to stay afloat, or were we looking for potentially two bodies? We just did not know. Can we get some boats up there, please, guys? We got the information that it was a father and his 13-year-old son, um, and that was a real kind of game changer for me. Um, a big lump in my throat, felt instantly emotional. I've got a 10-year-old son myself. I'm not the only parent on that boat. And for everybody, it got very, very serious very, very quickly. All the crew have to go on is that the upturned kayak was last seen around four nautical miles up the coast from Malvra, just north of Dillis Island. I was in the wheelhouse taking information over the radio. Josh, one of our junior crew members, I could hear him shouting at the top, I've seen somebody. I'd looked, but then I looked away. And then I looked back again, but something in my, it just caught my eye that without the binoculars that there was somebody on the island. One, two, three. The fastest way to get to the island is with the small Y-class boat. As Martin and Josh approach, two figures appear. Bear with me. Watch yourself. Get in contact with the bowboat. Okay, yeah, Josh. Right. What's your name, mate? Joe. Joe. I'm Martin, okay? What's your name, mate? Paul. Paul, right. Have you ingested water? Yeah. Yeah. You've swallowed quite a bit of water. And we're feeling really cold. Yeah. Right, okay. You got no shoes or nothing, no, mate? No. Right. Came off. Came off. Sorry, I've got cut feet. Okay, mate. Follow my footsteps, don't cross the high stuff. Right, yeah, yeah. Staying unconscious in the water, he's jabbing the house. Right. I was falling asleep. You were falling asleep, were you? Right, okay, mate. Within minutes of talking to him, you could, you could see that they're both in through something really, really traumatic. Right. Take your own time, take your time. Wet, cold and exhausted, the boy and his father have spent over two hours exposed to the elements on the island. It was by far the most severe case of hypothermia I've definitely seen. Yeah, everything. The, the shakes, the clamminess, the blue lips. Josh, ask for the chopper. We needed to get these casualties off here. I need to get them to professional medical assistance. I think the plan is to evacuate by helicopter. We're going to get you seen to hospital. <laughs> Paul and his son, Joe, were off the coast of Malvra when their kayak started taking in water and capsized. We were about half a mile from Unis Dillas. Um, so obviously that was closest, so I said, if you straddle the boat, I'll try and kick it towards the island. After half an hour making no progress and with hypothermia setting in, they abandoned the kayak and tried to swim to the island instead. We got in the water uh, and Joe was um, quite upset. He said, uh, I think we're going to die. And I was convinced we both were at that point because of the, the cold. He said, again, I think we are going to die, Dad. But if we die, the last thing I want to do is give you a kiss. Um, so I gave him a kiss and I told him I loved him. And we set off to swim. 
the waves were breaking on me and I was taking on quite a lot of water and obviously the sea temperature was what it was and I'd been in there for quite a long time by now. My arms were starting to uh, fail and I was on my back and I remember feeling that this is really warm and really peaceful and just went to sleep. I saw he was like unconscious, so I jumped back in the sea, swam to him, carried him to that island, then uh, gave him CPR and resuscitated him. I don't remember how I got from the side of the water up to the tower. I asked Joe how I got there and he said, uh, I put you in my back and I carried you. He was just on my shoulder, so like, because the rocks were about four or five foot high each one, I'd carry him up one, then I'd just like, have a little tiny rest because it's quite tiring. Then I'd just keep on carrying up as many as I could, and then we got to the shelter. Without a shadow of a doubt, Joe saved my life that day. When he thought that he was looking at death, the fact that he wanted to do that as a, as a last action, I think, is uh, lovely. <laughs> 